Okay, in this video I'm going to make a visible light sensitive detector and I'm going to use it as an alarm. So I want my circuit to detect light and remember that light has been detected and set off an alarm and only you, then you have to actually physically reset the circuit in order for the alarm to turn off. So here is the uh, here are the components I'm using. I'm using HCF 4011BE NAND gate integrated circuit. I'm using two or sorry, three transistors, which are BC547s, so known, otherwise known as 2N2222s. They're NPNs, by the way. And I'm using 600 ohm resistors. So anywhere, any place to see a resistor. Actually, I'm also using one, uh, 100 kilo ohm resistors, and I'll point those out in a moment. So here's the circuit diagram for my for my circuit. Right, points note here. I'm using a photodiode. The photodiode is. Uh, it's got a peak wavelength detection of 550 nanometers, which puts it in the center of the visible spectrum. That was about six, six euros. I got that in uh, Maplin. And anywhere on this diagram here, I have 600 ohm resistors. We'll see the 100, 100 kilo ohm resistors in a moment. So if you look at the previous videos, you will recognize this here as an RS flip flop, which is a basic memory cell. And you'll also recognize this transistor here, here, and here as NOT gates. I'll speak about those in a moment. I'm using a 9 volt input, uh, which is on that high line there, and I'm using this line here as ground. So just a quick note on the RS flip-flop here. The default position for the NAND gate RS flip-flop is high. So both inputs are high is the default position. And in order to write the cell, you put one of the inputs low and then put them back high again. So it would remember something going low and it's otherwise known as an active low memory cell. However, the photodiode here will go high when light shines on it. So it will conduct when light shines on it. Which means if I, if I connected my photodiode directly into my RS flip-flop, uh, it would always be off, which means it would be consistently writing to the cell. Which would, Then that's an incompatible, um, they're, they're incompatible states. So what I need to do is not the output of my of my photodiode. So I've put it on the base of a transistor with a 600 ohm resistor here. So when there is no light, it does not it does not conduct, and as a result, this wire here is high. When it detects light, it conducts, and this wire here goes low, and you're able to write into the cell. Now. I should be able to. By the way, this here is uh, my output Q. I'm not. I've not Q disconnected or not connected and this this wire here is that's uh, that's reset I'll speak about that in a moment anyway so my output here Q I, I could I could uh, connect that directly down to ground or through or through um through an indicator and that, that should work however I'm using a buzzer and my buzzer it basically takes uh, six volts to run it and I'm finding that it won't work uh, because I'm dropping too much voltage in around here so what I've done is, I've I want the output value here uh, at a later stage in my circuit. So I've put it through a NOT gate and another NOT gate to get back the same value. But the difference this time is this NOT gate, while the value is the same as as, as on the flip flop, or sorry here is the same on the flip flop, the voltage coming down and into my out into my uh, into my indicator is is going to be higher because it's coming from here rather than coming from someplace over here. So that's the reason. I've knotted and knotted my output to give me back the same output. And remember at this here, that is actually a buzzer rather than an LED. Uh, my uh, reset on my flip-flop is, is always high. Well, I've actually put a switch on that, you'll see it in the circuit, but that's always high, so I've connect that to, connected that to a uh, to high line through a 600 ohm resistor as well. So uh, that's pretty much how you set up the circuit. Now I'm going to talk a, bit, a small bit more about the, the chip itself, which is what I've built the RS flip flop out of uh, right now. So, so this is the schematic for the uh, the chip, the HCF four zero one one BE. You can get pinouts for this online, so I wouldn't worry about it. And also, I, I've used this chip in many other videos, so you can look it up those if you're getting confused. Now I actually I physically haven't put on the gates onto it, but like I said, you can check that out yourself. So, I'm using the 9 volt input, and there's my ground line here. Now, uh, you, I found that I couldn't have my chip powered on the uh, the same line 
as everything else. In other words, I couldn't have it on the, at the lines of these transistors. And I found the reason was that uh, it was the the voltages weren't working uh, or weren't compatible, and as a result, my uh, my basically my my chip wasn't working properly. So for that reason, uh, where, whereas this nine volt this five nine volt line here will go directly into uh, into we'll say the um, the transistors. It is also uh, not connecting it directly to the, uh, the the chip. I've put it through a 600 ohm resistor here, and that goes into the high line here, and the low line clearly goes out goes down to ground. The two gates on the top of the chip are not using it at all, and I'm using two gates down here. So just to point, just very quickly, there are one, two, three pins, four, five, six pins here. Six pins give me two gates. That's input one, in, input two, output one, uh, input one, input two. Output two. So these small ones here are my outputs. These two, these two here are my inputs. So there is gate one, and here is gate two. So uh, for reasons uh, you can check up in other videos, you will always have to ground your inputs via large resistances to ground. So these ones here, highlighted in green, are 100 kilo ohm resistors tied down to ground, and they are they are on the, all both of my inputs for both of my gates. So I have four of those. And for, as with the RS flip flop, look it up in a previous video. The input, uh, sorry, the output of one gate is connected to the input of the other. The output of this gate is connected to the input of that one. So you can that's that that corresponds to this part of my uh, circuit diagram up here. The set here that's coming from my photodiode, and from my NAT gate is coming in here. Now notice it's not coming. Notice which side of my resistor is coming from. Furthermore, the the reset is coming from my high line. Now notice, notice it's not coming from 9 volts, but after the actual resistor itself, it's coming down here and going into my uh, into my input there on my gate. So I think it's time for me to show you the to show you the circuit itself. If there are any problems, just put a comment on the on the video. Just give me a moment here now and I set this up, and I'll give you a close up, of course, as well. Okay, so what's happening here? Let me see if I can kill that light. Yeah, what's happening here? So, first of all, I have my photodiode and my NOT gate. It's actually going off at the moment, so I'll turn that off there. So I have two photodiodes down here, going through a NOT gate. This uh, LED here is just an indicator to show, show what's, what's happening. And they go into my RS flip-flop up here. The output of my RS flip-flop, this red wire here, comes down into both the, the, the final two NOT gates, here and here, and then goes to, uh, goes to ground via a buzzer. My high line is just is along here, you can just about see it, I'll show you in a moment, and there's my low line. So. There isn't much point really me showing how to build it. Like if you can follow my previous videos, you definitely be able to do this. I also, by the way, I have a switch here. That's actually on my reset, and the reason is it just it just makes it easier. Uh, it allows me to be able to reset my 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 memory cell. So I'll just give you. I suppose I'll let, you, let you have a look at this now. So there's my high line. I have. I have on the base of this, of the base of this transistor, my 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 photodiodes coming into it. This uh, orange wire here represents its output, leading in to my uh, RS flip flop. These two small purple wires here are my my crossing inputs and outputs on my flip flop. You can see the one, two, three, four, one hundred kilo ohm resistors. This one here, by the way, is a six hundred ohm resistor. Then uh, S, or my, or sorry, Q. My output is on this LED. It leads down here into the base of my first, uh, my second NOT gate. The output of that one leads into the base of my uh, third NOT gate, and from there I'm going into a buzzer down to ground. So I think it's time we uh, we saw this going. Now I've actually put, uh, I've actually reduced the output on my. 
my buzzer. Let's fix that and this, this might be kind of loud. Just one moment. Right, so it's currently in its default position. Where's my torch? It's currently in its default position. So this uh, this light here indicates that there is no light. And you'll see when light shines on my photodiodes, that will go low, and it'll keep following the light. So shine my light on. Hi, hi. Now I'm going to do that again, but this time I'm going to continue flashing uh, light onto my photodiode, and you'll see that it, the, the flip flop will stay in it in the on state or will still have been written to and the output won't change until I reset it so it will remember that it saw light and that is how you make a visible light sensitive detector using used as an alarm